Well, Parliament was back in session today and the opposition went on the offensive over the riots in Delhi, demanding answers from the Home Minister, the government. However, the centre refused to have any discussion until what they call normalcy comes back to the city. Sunil Prabhu has more. India. Protests outside Parliament over the Delhi violence where almost 50 people have been killed. Inside, both houses opened for a couple of minutes and then began again three hours later. But the Speaker, Chairperson and the government made it clear. No debate in Parliament until what they called normalcy is returned. Even the common courtesy of condoling the loss of lives in the Delhi riots failed to get a mention in both houses. Our priority should be to see that the normalcy is restored and then we discuss about ways and means of preventing it and also taking measures. Three opposition parties, the Congress, AAP and the Trinamool Congress, protested, but in different voices. So, three days and three nights, ये केंद्रीय सरकार सोई नहीं होती इसकी वजह से ये कोहिन धुरे दिल की पार्टी के जी भावे मानुष कुत्ता हुए थे आमे मोने कोरी एक एक टक प्लान जिनोसाइड गानो होता After failing to condole the loss of lives in the Delhi riots, there is a state of confusion whether to allow a debate immediately or wait for an opportune time. Either way, the Prime Minister has been consulting the Home Minister, the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi and trying to take a call. But they realize somewhere down the line that any further delay is causing them even greater embarrassment. In this chaos, the Speaker allowed the government to table bills and in the House where the government has a majority of 350 out of the 543 seats, normalcy both in the House and in North East Delhi still seems some days off. With camera person Sashi Khan, Sunit Prabhu, Hindi TV. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court will hear on Wednesday a plea where that seeks FIRs for hate speech against BJP leaders, including Union Minister Anurag Thakur, Kapil Mishra, Parvesh Verma and Abhay Verma. The petitioner said that the Delhi High Court had posted the matter for six weeks later and that the matter was urgent. The Chief Justice is bench. We'll hear it. In two days' time, the Supreme Court will hear a plea why these four BJP leaders, including Union Minister Anurag Thakur, should not face FIRs. This comes after High Court set a date six weeks later on this matter. The plea has been filed by a group of victims of the Delhi violence, alleging that the hate speech of these four BJP leaders led to riots in which almost 50 people have been killed. BJP leader Kapil Mishra tweeted this video of himself threatening to take the law into his hands while standing next to a police officer. Victim's lawyer told Supreme Court, activist Harsh Mandar went to Delhi High Court, initially notice was issued. But the judge was transferred, then the case went to Chief Justice Court and it has been adjourned to April 13. People are killed at the rate of 10 per day and it is urgent. Chief Justice S.A. Bobde said, we would wish peace, but there are limitations to our judicial power. We are not equipped to prevent these things from happening. This is a kind of pressure, we cannot handle it. The petitioners want the court to constitute special investigation team of officers outside Delhi to probe the violence and appoint a retired judge to probe communal attacks and identify the police involved. Before the High Court, the Centre and the Delhi Police said they wanted more time to decide on FIRs and got four weeks' time. Now March 4 hearing in the top court assumes significance. 
Initially, Delhi police got almost four weeks. Now they've got only 48 hours. With Arunachalam Vedyanathan, Usama Shah for NDTV. Well, joining us here in the studio tonight, advocate, Supreme Court advocate Akhil Sibyl is with us, senior journalist Pragya Tiwari, member of parliament from the BJD, Mr. Pinaki Mishra joins us, Raghav Chadha from the Aam Aadmi Party, and uh, Lieutenant General D.P. Vats, uh, who is a member of parliament from the BJP from the Rajya Sabha. Uh, let me take this question to Pinaki Mishra first. Uh, where does the BJD stand, Pinaki Mishra, on this demand that some of the other opposition parties made today in parliament that the home minister must take responsibility for what has happened in delhi that there must be a discussion on this are you in agreement with that uh, there was a business advisory committee meeting this morning at the in the speaker's chamber and it was it was the congress party and the dmk which wanted an immediate discussion i was asked and I, my opinion was that it's the situation is far too volatile just now for an immediate parliamentary debate, you know, uh, leaving aside all business because there will be a lot of incendiary speeches which will be made there. There is no question about it. There will be <clears throat> absolute partisanship on the floor of the House and there are people out there who will suffer because it will definitely flare up sentiments and, you know, it's, it is likely to be a no-holds-barred fight. And I don't think uh, it's in the interest of the people out there that Parliament should debate this today or tomorrow or the day after until things are stable. And my other point was that I, I completely felt that the Prime Minister should really, uh, you know, find time to come to the House and make a statement. So, so, you know, you have to ask for his convenience. That's the normal protocol. You have to ask the Prime Minister what's his convenience to, to attend so, the House so and address this, the House. Sorry, if I understand this so correctly, said, what you're saying is... So, the Prime Minister is able to come. So, okay, so you're saying you'd, you would rather have a statement from the Prime Minister on what happened, but you feel it's not the right time for a discussion no, or a debate, debate on the issue be because a, it's... Because there should be a debate. There should be a debate probably under 193, which is, which is a, you know, which is a whole day debate, at the end of which the PM must uh, reply. I think that's that's but, what but you would But you don't like. want that right now. Are, are you saying you don't trust members of parliament like. to be responsible in their utterances? I mean, that's kind of a hopeless situation if we don't trust our own MPs to be responsible with the words they use on the floor of the house. I mean, the whole idea of parliament is to talk about the most pressing <coughs> issues of the day. You, you've seen this problem before, you know, in the in the in the Presidential, uh, presidential address uh, when there was a vote of thanks a num and you know the Delhi elections was on boil at that point and there were a number of speeches made uh, you know during that time which I think added fuel to fire so yes I mean if you're going to now talk about uh, responsibility of MPs on the floor of the house <clears throat> you should you should you should have been there today to see uh, you know what transpired okay. well interesting it's an interesting position taken by your party you know, in the well of the house uh, General Watts, uh, sir, may I ask that do you believe the BJP should on its own be taking action against those who have made these hate speeches rather than wait even for the court to intervene? After all, it was Amit Shah, no less, who said after the Delhi election that those kind of speeches should not have been made. General Watts. You see, uh, as a service officer, as a general retired, I will say, these are the fault lines of democracy and fault lines in our nation. Fault lines are communal tensions, caste tensions, and same way, disruption of parliament functioning properly. As far as uh, uh, speeches are concerned and uh, taking action is concerned, that uh, the things are already under investigation, and uh, people have gone even to the judiciary, Supreme Court. What we say, the today's point is that parliament should function. And uh, opposition has no business to disrupt the conduct of parliament. As far as uh, discussion is concerned, discussion uh, chairman has agreed even speaker has agreed there will be discussion, but let the frayed tensions cool down first. Frayed tempers, you see there have been recent violence, there are deaths, 
and uh, people are still not come out of their houses properly, then so there were communal rights under these the situations if the people Prime make Minister inflammatory. Do you think we should at least hear from the Home Minister and the Prime Minister? It would actually, see, it may actually calm people down if, as you I, talk about frayed tempers, to hear some words of empathy from the top leadership. Well, they, they are cal calming the people. There is no doubt about it. He is Prime Minister of India. He is Home Minister of India. And they have behaved quite responsibly. They have not uh, sculpted their responsibility. Here the topic is, ke should we discuss this in Parliament? And especially in such a Parliament where members behave the way they did today. Under these situations, already communal okay. rights have taken Raghav place. Chadha, there request. were firings also to quell those communal... Okay, Raghav Chadha, does the AAP agree with that? Now, under such a situation... Okay, sir, just asking the Aam Aadmi Party the same question. Do you agree with that, Raghav? Yeah, go ahead. Well, 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 well Nidhi, absolutely not. You, you, you see the, the founding principle, the cardinal rule of uh, the parliamentary democracy of ours is that the legislature must keep the executive in check and seek answers from the executive every time, you know, time and again. And by the extension of the logic that I just heard the previous speaker talk about, uh, by the extension of that logic, no politician, neither of the ruling party nor of the opposition party should even visit the affected areas, should even speak on this topic and we should certainly not be having these panel discussions because then these can also lead to inflammatory comments, heat up uh, matters and therefore, you know, relief work and rehabilitation will not take place. I mean, these are absolutely, I, I think, ill-founded comments. The fact is that the, it is the duty of the Honorable Home Minister to make a statement in the House simply because and one of the biggest reasons for that is that law and order and policing in Delhi is not a state subject that doesn't come under the elected government of Delhi. That falls under the jurisdiction fairly and squarely under the exclusive jurisdiction of the MHA, that is the Ministry of Home Affairs. And if there is one person responsible for law and order policing, that person happens to be Mr. Amit Shah. At least there needs to be a statement by him where close to 50 people have died in Delhi while a foreign dignitary was visiting uh, the Indian soil. He was on the Indian soil and thousands and thousands of people have been displaced. You know, in this day and age, in this century, we are having communal riots in the capital of the city where yeah. the Delhi police, which is, you know, the most well-trained police in the entire country, uh, uh, you know, but it's... Actually, you make a good uh, point because by this logic, you should Delhi ban police, half of India's like news channels for the discussions we're doing also, on the Delhi riots I, because they, that will inflame, and they, and they, I mean, they, everybody. You're, you're absolutely right absolutely. about that, that, that. Then we should just, yeah, we exactly. should stop we even, stop you know, talking. it's like we should stop, we should look the other way. Yeah. Essentially, what these people are saying, we should look so the other me, way. So let me just get into this whole thing. Because okay. we should just hide Rakhav, in our just rooms and we should not address, you know, the elephant in the room. Absolutely, good point. And let me in... I, I, I'll just come back to you, Raghav. Uh, uh, Akhil Sibyl, just wanted to ask you though, while we're seeing Parliament trying to, uh, in, a, in a democracy, trying to even get a statement out of the leadership on, on what has happened in Delhi, what do you make of, you know, the, you, you know, the court's handling of this now? We've gone through what has happened in the Delhi High Court. And today the Chief Justice said, you know, we're under pressure, there's a limit to what we can do, yet he has posted the matter for a couple of days from now. Is this in a way a test? Uh, for the judiciary on how, how it responds to this now? Uh, well, I think that uh, related, related to the question of what needs to be discussed is what questions need to be answered. Now, when it comes to law and order, there's the part which, which is prevention, and then there's accountability after a crime is committed. What the High Court on 26th of February expressed, two judges, a division bench uh, presided over by Justice Modlidhar, was anguish, and it's there in the order, anguish that FIRs are not being registered, anguish that there's even a day's delay, anguish that the Supreme Court's uh, uh, judgment of Lalita Kumari doesn't appear to have been followed, which requires that the minute there is information regarding a cognizable offense, an FIR must be registered without any preliminary inquiry, without undue delay, because it's necessary both for transparency and for judicial oversight, because that's the first step towards access to justice. And therefore, the court was, doesn't appear to have been particularly impressed as the order reflects 
with submissions on behalf of the government that it would all be done at an appropriate juncture. So we are seeing that kind of a stand in court now resonate in parliament that let's defer, let's answer these questions later, let's act uh, to preserve law and order uh, 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 you know, at, a, at a later time when the environment is conducive. But the point is, I heard statements of uh, normalcy, and let's wait for normalcy to return. I don't think normalcy will ever return to a mother who's lost her child. It'll never come. And therefore, you have to, A, look at what was the lapse that happened on the part of the police, because I don't think anybody can argue that there wasn't a lapse. Now, whether it was complicity, which is more sinister, or inefficiency, What's the action that has been taken? That's question number one. Have there been suspensions? Are there internal inquiries? Now, the Supreme Court in 2006, in Prakash Singh's case, uh, issued a slew of directions for police reform. Which no one has followed. Which no one has followed, including, yeah. for instance, that the investigation arm of the police yeah. has to be separated from the arm that maintains law and order. And you have a scenario today where there are allegations of the police being complicit in allowing this to happen. And they're probing themselves. And they're probing themselves. Yeah. That's one aspect. The second is the only action perhaps that we have seen is a new police commissioner and police now patrolling. But who's going to answer the question as to what so happened for three days? Yeah. So the question is about accountability, Pragya, right? So as a, as a citizen, as a journalist, would you not want to <coughs> hear the government in parliament, even at this time, uh, answer some of these questions? at least make a statement, if not have a full debate. Isn't that what Parliament is supposed to be, to begin with? Well, procedurally, yes. But I, I think we're well past that. In the last um, six odd years of this government being in power, um, what, you know, what it, it will tantamount to eventually when it happens, and I have no manner of doubt that some kind of statement will eventually be issued, will be putting Band-Aid on a, a wound that is fatal uh, already. And, you know, Nidhi, I was at this, I was with you on a show when uh, the AAP won the Delhi elections and we were asking whether the fact that the communal rhetoric did not work will mean that the BJP will now dial back on politics of hate. And I said this then and I will say this now, that they will not be doing that for two different reasons. One is that it strategically makes no sense. You cannot deploy a massive machinery to propagate hate and then want to dial it back. Hate is not something that comes with a thermostat. It is not, does not have temperature control. It is a Frankensteinian monster and once you create it, you do not entirely control it. So they have no option but to keep feeding that monster, even strategically, whether or not they're getting votes on the basis of it or not. They cannot change their strategy. The second thing is we keep thinking that the BJP does this tactfully. The BJP does this because they want to deflect attention from the economy or they want to win elections, polarize. And of course, these statements are true. But what, what we forget is that this is also in the DNA of the party. The genesis of this party lies in a social cultural movement that does not believe in the secular constitutional idea of India. So even if there were no returns to this, even if it was not tactful, this is the reason why the party was formed and this is the reason the party has come to power. That's the central mandate. So there's no question of going back from this path. And now the third thing is what we're seeing increasingly is that the democracy is being hollowed out. Institutions are being challenged. They're being compromised, whether it's judiciary, whether it's investigative agencies. And I'm not saying that they were rock solid before that. But whatever chinks were there in the armor are being exploited. So we have a scenario where hate is being pumped into society. We you know, uh, Institutions are, are being point. hollowed out. And I, I don't know where we're headed with B this. Pinaki Mishra, actually what Pragya Tiwari says makes it all the more important for opposition parties and parties like yourself which can't quite decide whether you are opposition or pro-BJP, sorry for that snide one, but uh, you know to actually question the government on institutional breakdowns, isn't that more critical than ever, uh, you know, than ever before today? Whether you look at the way things have played out, say in Jammu and Kashmir, to the way uh, these protests have been handled and now this, this violence in Delhi. Well, let me <clears throat> just first way, first of all, just uh, clarify something. Uh, the analogy was drawn by some of them, and including Mr. Sybil, as to whether you know uh, the manner in which the courts have now uh, postponed hearing for almost four weeks, 
whether parliament has done the same. I don't think parliament has quite done the same. I think a parliament debate is not being sought next month, uh, probably as early as next week. So therefore, it's it's not something that we are indefinitely, uh, you know, shunting off. But yes, you know, parties like ours uh, have always <coughs> said that look, we are we are uh, as you. You, you said that you said this snidely, but you've asked, asked me this question before quite forthrightly. So not snidely at all. And, and we've been very forthright about it, that parties like us now, which depend on the central government in very large measure for the benefit of our state, because that's the nature of our polity today. You cannot endlessly be locked in a fight with the central government. So who's going to speak up and, for values, carry on Mr. Mishra? Kind of it's, is, it a, is everything down no to a question. fight Look, with the center, central you heard, government? You heard Do you Mr. not Narin care Patnaik, about Mr. what is happening around Nidhi, us? You Who, have to be who's fair. going to speak up? Arvind Kejriwal, you know, Patnaik. he's doing his politics of convenience. Um, who's going to speak up for the right thing? I mean, that, that's just a simple question. One moment. Please, please understand. <coughs> you, have to, you have to appreciate what Mr. Naveen Patnaik did the moment he realized that this is now the precipice and there is a chance that going further ahead would entail all kinds of problems. He immediately said that we will, our state, we were one of the first which said we will not back the NRC. So you have to give him credit for that. We made a public statement and thereafter a number of states followed. So therefore, we have stopped at the edge. We thought we, su we supported the government on, on CAA because we thought that it is inclusionary. It, you can include more uh, later. There is a debate on whether you know it should have been religious done about the NRC, now. Mr. Mishra, it's, it's really about how opposition parties are approaching these critical issues at this critical time in our democracy in parliament, which is sort of, uh, you know, th that is the great hallmark of our democracy. Uh, you know, and, and Raghav Chadha, quick last comments from everyone on that. Uh, what is debate. the up stand on who, uh, on, who's, uh, on who is accountable for this violence in Delhi? Considering that there has been some interesting politicking going on recently, uh, Raghav, do you think the buck stops with the Home Minister or not? Well, first of all, we have said this on a number of occasions. I will say this again, that any person who is found to be a perpetrator or to play any role in the communal violence that happened in Delhi, whether he belongs to AAP or to BJP or to Congress or subscribes to any ideological, uh, you know, uh, 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 any ideology, should be punished, should be uh, brought to book whether uh, that person is, is an AAP counsellor or that person is a former MLA of the Bharti Janata Party. Now having said that, of course there are reports that there is uh, in some areas uh, complete complacency on the part of the police and some parts it has it is also surfaced that the police was complicit in this. There are also information along with evidence that a lot of people uh, managed to come into Delhi from the neighboring states using the you know the border area and they were the you know the, the principal perpetrators of the communal violence that has happened. All this is a subject matter of an, of a, of an investigation. Uh, the buck certainly stops, certainly stops with the Home Minister because the Home Minister is responsible for policing and maintenance of law and order in Delhi and there has been a complete failure of intelligence as well as of policing. Okay. So therefore the only person who should be answering these questions is, is the, the Home, Home Minister. Minister and on, yeah. on you know you have you have the President of the United States visiting the capital of the country and the, uh, the intelligence officers of, of our country and the agencies have no idea that something like this at this youth scale is being planned. No, I mean, so is it I even, have a quick last question. Is, is, is it even conceivable? Seconds. Is this okay, thought even okay. conceivable? Uh, Certainly not. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I agree on that point. Akhil okay, Sibyl, is then the only thing that is conceivable in this situation is some kind of an SIT, you know, this is all sounds like deja vu, but some kind of an SIT, Supreme Court monitor that would have to investigate what happened in Delhi. I, I don't think we can leave everything at every opportunity to the courts. We, the so pe people, it? people need reassurance. Thousands are displaced. There is a, a sense of fear. Uh, people are made homeless. People have lost their lives, their loved ones. Now that reassurance isn't going to come from benign statements of, you know, wanting peace and maintenance of harmony. It's going to come from strong words and decisive action. And I think we've and seen, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a complete abdication in that regard. We had what seemed and felt like a photo op from AAP at a time when uh, 
possibly the political class ought to have been there on the ground, certainly the state government, to reach out. Uh, to reach out. And will, the healing touch to now is not going to be to come only from relief efforts and photo ops at hospitals. It has to come from strong condemnation from the political yes. class, which has not come so and, far. And, and a much more sustained effort at reaching out. I wish we had more time today to talk about this, but we, I think we'll be unfortunately talking about quite a bit of this the rest of the week as well. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us tonight. We'll take a break. When we come back, Vishnu is going to be here with the other big, big story we're tracking, and that is the coronavirus that's also come to the national capital now. That's next.